What's up guys, welcome back to Biopilot Arms. Look, 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 I know, I know it's been quite a while since I've put any videos out. It's been like, what, like two months or something like that. I am so sorry uh, that you guys have missed my beautiful, pretty face. But, you know, personal life, things happen, you go on vacation, you know, new things happen, and you just lose track of time between work and this and that. You just sometimes don't have time. I'm sure that you guys are getting sick and tired of my memes, considering that's the only thing I've had time to actually make. Mostly because making memes takes about, you know, five minutes, and using CapCut and TikTok is fairly easy to do on the go, but real editing and actually throwing a video together takes a lot of time, so I'm sorry for that. I will be putting out some new videos um, going forward. Um, so, this is the first one. Um, I'm going to have a couple more coming out uh, after this one as well, um, but for right now, let's just get into some really good news. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen um, the ATF pistol brace uh, rule, um, but for those of you who didn't, the Fifth Circuit... Um, Judge Reed O'Connor of the Northern District of Texas on June 13th held that the ATF's pistol brace rule is void. Yay! Although it didn't actually talk about any of the constitutionality or anything like that, uh, the court said it doesn't really need to talk about that because the ATF's conduct violated the APA or the Administrative Procedures Act. Uh, it's basically procedural requirements uh, that they have to do, and they didn't do them. Uh, that's the ATF. They don't care. They just do whatever they want. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go over a little bit of that. We're going to go and look at the actual case, and uh, we're going to go ahead and read a little bit of that. Um, and I will link to the PDF uh, and the story that I found the PDF on um, in the con or in the description below, uh, if you guys want to go ahead and read the entire thing um, after this video. Okay, so this is the Mock versus Garland case, and um, this was heard in the Northern District of Texas in Fort Worth. Uh, blah blah blah. Having carefully considered the briefing and applicable law, plaintiff's motion is granted and defendant's motion is denied for the reasons stated herein. So, so in their motion for summary judgment, the plaintiffs claim that the final rule violated the APA's procedural requirements because one, it was not a logical outgrowth of the proposed rule; two, defendants defendants acted arbitrarily when they failed to consider important aspects of the problems presented and caused by the final rule and three defendants impermissibly extended their statutory authority under the national firearms act of 1934 the nfa and the gun control act of 1968 and four it violates various aspects of the united states constitution so we're going to skip number one because it actually addresses that in one of the other points. Um, the adaptation of the final rule is arbitrary and capricious. Plaintiffs contend that the adoption of the final rule is arbitrary and capricious for three reasons. The agencies failed to consider commenters', commenters concerns, reversed a long-standing position without meaningful explanation, and drafted a rule with vague standards. In contrast, defendants assert that none of plaintiffs' stated reasons are sufficient to invalidate the final rule on its face. The court finds that the adaptation of the final rule was arbitrary and capricious for two reasons. First, the defendants did not provide a detailed justification for the reversal of the agency's long-standing position because for a decade, the, 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 the rule that pistol braces were perfectly fine was long-standing i mean they asked the atf while they were producing them hey are these okay and they were like yeah it's fine and then a decade later they're like oh you know what no no it's not fine anymore um and second the rules final standards are imp impermissibly vague so they set one set out and then at the last minute they changed it and basically they were like here's the rule set for 
when a pistol brace makes it a short barreled rifle. But, like, there's no way to actually tell because all of the standards that they put in place were basically subject to interpretation by the ATF. So, one thing they could be like, that's a rifle, and the other one they could be like, that's a pistol, and it could be the exact same thing. And it just felt how it was just based on how the agent felt that day because the rules were so vague they could just pick out whatever, whatever they wanted. So it explains it here. For close to a decade, the ATF concluded that attaching the brace to a firearm does not alter the classification of the firearm or subject the firearm to NFA control. The ATF changed course on this position for the first time in 2023 when it issued the final rule reversing the agency's otherwise standing policy. When an agency changes course, as the ATF did here, it must be cognizant that long-standing policies may have in, in, uh, engineered serious reliance interests that may be taken into account. Uh, it would be arbitrary and capricious to ignore such matters. But that is exactly what defendants did when they inexpli inexplicably and fundamentally switched to the position on stabilizing braces without providing sufficient explanations and notice. Uh, basically, under the final rule, the ATF estimated about 99% of pistols with braces would be reclassified as NFA rifles. Yeah, so fuck all of us, right? The ATF can... I don't know, I'm not going to read the rest of this shit. Um, pretty much, the defendant's disregard for the principles of fair notice and consideration of reliance interests is further exacerbated by its failure to follow the APA's pr procedural requirements for public notice and comment. As discussed above, defendants failed to follow proper notice and comment procedures because of the proposed rule, and the final rule differed in immense ways. Uh, so basically, because what they put in the comments section, because there's that open period of where you can comment on it, that rule was different from what they ended up putting out after the comment period, so they didn't follow the procedural rules. Accordingly, plaintiff's motion for summary judgment is granted and defendant's motion for summary judgment is denied as to this issue. For the reasons said above, the court grants plaintiff's motion for summary judgment on the grounds that the final rule violated the APA's procedural requirements because it was arbitrary and capricious and was not a logical outgrowth of the proposed rule. Denies defendant's cross motion for summary judgment, denies plaintiff's request for a permanent injunction, and vacates the final rule, so ordered this 13th day of June 2024. So, that is a vacation based on the APA. It doesn't actually get to the constitutional issues of it. I believe that there are still cases going to the Supreme Court which will talk about the constitutionality of it. But as of right now, the final brace rule is dead um for now of course there's going to be appeals etc uh and or they may uh try again with a different one unless the supreme court strikes it down uh in its entirety so we'll kind of see how that goes so as of now it's good news uh for those of you who didn't hear it uh so yeah go ahead uh, especially if you're in the Fifth Circuit, because this happened in the Fifth Circuit. Go ahead and slap those pistol braces back on them bad boys and take them out to the rain. And again, I will link to the actual full document uh, down below in the description for you guys to check out if you want to read the entire thing. I really didn't want to because it's kind of long. It's 12 pages. It's too much. And I'm lazy. So, uh... Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that way you get uh, notifications whenever I post anything. But, you know, who knows? YouTube likes to screw with that. So, we'll see. Anyway, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. And I will see you guys next time.